Yo, what's going on, gang? It's that black guy, the black guy, back in with a bang video for y'all. And I know two posts in one week. Who would have thought, bro? It's some monumental shit. I can't believe it. I'm posting twice in one week. It's the summertime, baby. We're going to let it fly. So this video is going to be about uh, this homeless man that used to live, basically live next to the store I worked at. I worked there for like two, two years, bro. Every day, this dude would be sitting right outside the window, right next to the front door at this fucking store, just lurking. <laughs> and like, I was, we was kind of gang with him. He was chill sometimes. Uh, we're going to get into that. So yeah, without further ado, actually, wait, wait, wait. Before I get into the story again, sorry. If you hear noise in the background, my boy, it's 90 degrees outside. I got the AC on, bruh. Let the AC do its thing. Don't complain about the little buzzing sound, please. I'm hot. I'm sweating, my boy. I'm, I'm like, it's a, it's a hot day. Okay? So yeah, let's get into this shit. So this story took place like two, three years ago while I was working at my my second job at Starbucks, I think. Some shit like that, bro. This was like the middle of the summer type of shit. So I was working there like damn near overtime, like 35, 40 hours a week type of shit. And I mean, it was calm. It was whatever. I really only worked there because the, the people I worked with were cool. Honestly, if the people I worked with didn't work there, I would have left that motherfucker in a jiffy. Let's keep it a bead. But there's this other guy, like, there's some customers that'll come by, you know, the regular customers that'll pop all, pop by every fucking day to get their latte and shit. Some of them were cool. Most of them were kind of annoying as fuck. And they just use you to try and get a free drink. But that's life, yo. <laughs> Niggas use you to get what they want. So this is one homeless guy that I mentioned before. His name was, uh, I'm just going to say his real name because who the fuck cares? He's not going to see this. He's homeless. You feel me? So the nigga name was Glenn. You know what I'm saying? And this nigga Glenn, he, um... Uh, he was, an, he was a character. I was, I, I, that's the best way I can really put it. Like, he, he was a character, my boy. Like, may, think of any random homeless man you'll see on the streets of New York, bro, and times that by three, and that's Glenn. Like, the nigga was just, like, the epitome of, like, crackhead homeless guy. You feel me? But he was a cool dude. Like, he would come in sometimes, you know, he had his little money he will get from, you know, standing outside asking niggas for change and shit. So he would come in, buy a little bagel, get a little coffee and shit in the morning, and we all talk to him, be like, yo, how you doing, bro? How you feeling? You, you know, you trying to get a job and shit? Obviously not at Starbucks. Not, we not trying to work with your smelly ass. No offense. You kind of stink, my boy. Take a shower. We didn't say that. I kind of said that to him once. I said, yo, my boy, like, you should go. <laughs> I forgot one day. I think he came in with a lottery ticket scratch off. He, he used to give us scratch off all the time. This, like, I don't know. He was a nice guy. Like, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to violate him. He was a nice dude. It just sucked that he, like, was homeless and kind of smelled bad. And no one wanted to really be around him like that <laughs> because of those reasons and like he had a whole like sort of tragic backstory type shit you know how every but like you know like in every movie the fucking character has a tragic backstory and shit so you sympathize with them but like his shit was like some real life sad shit and i'm not gonna lie i don't really remember the thing i'm not gonna cap it's been so long i haven't seen this dude in dumb long i don't remember his low his little sob story i'm sorry i'm not gonna sit here and try and make one up for y'all i apologize but you have to take my word for it my son came from a sad background, you know what I'm saying? I think he was like in some sort of war or something. I don't even know. I'm not going. I'm not going to go off Hank Cannon right now, but I think he was some sort of war vet. That's that's all I can say. So you know, he low key had that like PTSD type of shit. So add, add PTSD on top of this dude doing crack and like heroin on a basically a regular basis, and you got a storm brewing up. You know what I'm saying? Which is why I was surprised why most of the time he was so chill. Then again, it makes sense if he if he's shooting up heroin, obviously he he gonna be chilling when he come in the thing. Like that should be having you fucked up. I think I've never done it. I've never even seen him do it. I seen him smoke meth before, which we gonna get into that. I never seen him shoot up no shit. If I seen him pull out a needle and start shooting shit up, I'm walking away. Like I'm a, I'm about to be like, yo, it's nice seeing you, my boy. I'll I'll catch you, you know, on my next shift or something. I'm not about to watch a nigga shoot up heroin in front of me. I'm sorry. That just feels disgusting. So this one day during the summer, I'm closing, obviously, because these niggas always had me closing. So it's like 10 o'clock at night. And like I said before, he basically lived outside our store, bro. So he was already tented out, camped out in that bitch, bro. He had a little uh, a little cardboard cutout that he'll use as a, a little mattress. He had a blanket, an old ass blanket he must have found in a dumpster or something, bro. He would, he would wear that shit over himself. He had his old clothes and jacket he had from like fucking five years ago from the Salvation Army. He was kind of set up and it was like, it wasn't even that, it was even that hot outside considering it was summertime. It was only like low 60s and there was mad wind. So it was a little chilly out, you know what I'm saying? 
So I see homeboy over there. I'm doing my normal garbage run before I leave. I got to go to the garbage can and take out all the garbage and shit. So he sees me going there and he's not really sleep sleep. So he sees me going there. So he gets up, follows me. I'm not really thinking much of it because like, nigga, I know this dude, bro. I've been working here for like over a year now. So me and him are kind of low. You know, we chop it up sometimes. So he come with me to the garbage run and, you know, we start talking about shit. He start asking me questions about what I'm about to do over the summer and shit like that. And he knows that he knows he knows me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I said before, we worked, we've been talking for like a year now. So he knows that, like, I'd be smoking and shit like that because he always sees me after my after my fucking after I clock out from my shifts when I'm outside the store smoking fucking weed, talking to him and shit while I'm waiting for my Uber to come and all that. So he knows that shit. So he he goes over there. And I know damn well his intention was to ask me about something to do with drugs. Because nine times out of ten, when he comes over to me to speak to me and I'm not working or like I'm not like in on the fucking clock, it's about drugs. The other one percent, the other one percent of the time, it's like if I'm on the clock in the store and he's like comes up to me and is like, "Yo, you, can I get a bagel or whatever?" Or he's trying to get like you know a loaf hookup on some free shit. But, you know, half the time I'll give to him because I didn't really give a fuck about that place. So, you know, he starts asking me, like, right next to the damn smelly-ass dumpsters and shit. At, like, 10 o'clock at night, it's pitch black. There's no lights at the dumpster. All the lights are, like, down at the fucking, down where the stores are. Because the dumpster is, like, all the way in the back alley type of shit. So, he got me, like, cornered in an alleyway asking me mad questions. Like, yo, what you got on you, bro? You got some drugs on you, bro? You got some marijuana? What you, what you, what you smoking tonight, bro? What you doing? I'm like, yo, bro, like... Please. Like, I'm low-key a little nervous at this point, because I don't know this nigga like that. Like, I said we talk from time to time. Like, when I clock in and clock out, I'm like, yo, what's up? We talk for, like, five minutes. I don't know him like that to for him to be, like, pushing up on me. Like, yo, like, you got some drugs on you, my boy? Like, on some crackhead shit. I'm like, yo, bro, like, I, had, I, like, I had shit on me, but I, obviously I'm capping. Like, I'm not going to tell you I got shit on me, bro. I'm not about to give you my shit. Fuck out of here. I don't care if you paying or not paying. I'm not giving you nothing that's mine fuck what you talk about so i'm like nah i don't got nothing on me bro it's all at home like you know i'm about to roll up when i get home and like unwind type of shit he's like yeah i feel you on that bro i'm trying to get i'm trying to get active right now bro like what day was it It was like a thursday or a friday i don't know bro it was summertime nigga so he was trying to get busy he's like yeah i'm trying to do some things i'm like what you what you <laughs> what you talking about bro like don't you got like hookups you don't got plugs around here bro you 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 live here nigga like you live right there on the floor like you don't got no plugs He's like, nah, I know some people, but, like, I don't know. I don't got a phone to call them or whatnot. I forgot you homeless, bro. My bad. So, he's like, you know, I do got this. And then he pull out a pipe. Nigga pull out a pipe. I'm thinking, oh, he about to smoke a bowl. Because, you know, every time I see niggas with the with the pipe, they be smoking a little bowl. Nigga, a little, put a little weed in there and get lit. He's like, oh, nah, nigga. They, this ain't, like, a, a pipe. This a pipe. I'm like, yeah, a pipe. I'm still not putting two and two together. I'm like, yeah, a pipe, bro. Like, I thought you didn't have weed. What you pulling that out for? Like, are you, you trying to flex on me? Like, I got shit at home, bro. He's like, nah, bro. Like, I'm about to smoke. I'm like, nigga, what you smoking? Penises? What you talking about? Like, you say you don't got no weed. You say you don't have anything. You just pressing me for the shit. He's like, nah, I got shit on me. I just didn't want to have to go to it. I was trying to save it. I'm like, huh? Yo, bro. This nigga pull out a baggie of some damn crystal, nigga. I can't break in bad crystal, bro. That shit look beautiful. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I would never do this shit in my life. But that crystal he had right there, it looked kind of cool. Like, I was looking at it. It was like a thick little crystal. I said, yo, that's... I said, I, I didn't say it out loud. But in my head, I'm thinking that meme. I'm like, I know that ain't what I think it is. I'm like, nigga, I know that ain't some meth you got in your hair right now. Like, in the next to a dumpster... Smoking meth out of a dirty pipe is crazy. I had to get out of there immediately. That was nuts. As soon as he put that shit in there and he's about to light it, I'm like, yo, I do it. I gotta go back, clock out, you know, you feel me? Like, it's getting late. I gotta lock the store and shit. You know what I'm saying? He's like, nah, you don't wanna. I'm like, nah, I'm nah, 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 nah. The fact that you even offered me that shit, bro, I should have, I should have known from there. That's a sign. I should not be talking to you, my boy. Like, my boy, if the story ended right there, shit would be all cool, peachy. I wouldn't even be worth uploading, my boy. Like, it wouldn't be worth the effort to upload this video. It wouldn't be worth recording that shit if that was the end of the story, my guy. Tell me why, like, two, three days later, right? I'm off for, like, two days, so I don't really see or speak to him because, obviously, I don't go by the fucking job on my off day. I don't care about that place. You feel me? So I go back to work on, like, Monday, Tuesday, or whenever. And there's these two, there's, a, there's like these uh, two cops that usually come by the store every night. They usually come, we mark them out for free shit, obviously, because they they police officers. So we give them a free coffee and a free little croissant or whatever the fuck, and they usually tell us about what's popping off in the area. Because there's a lot of weird shit that goes on in that area. Apparently, there's mad crackheads and just fucking weirdos. 
You feel me? So today, you know, he pulls up. I'm not going to reveal the officer's name, but you know, we're going to call him Officer Thompson. You know what I'm saying? So Officer Thompson pops out. And, you know, I'm not wanting to talk to the popo, but if the popo going to gossip to me, nigga, I'm all ears. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, homeboy pop out. And I'm like, yo, bro, what's the juice, nigga? What's going on? Like, what's the word on the street? And he's like, he's like, yo, bro, <laughs> you know that dude Glenn right there that he was, the, that he was sleeping there? Because I didn't notice at first. But because some days Glenn just doesn't show up. Some days he just he's just outside. You know what I'm saying? Like, usually he's posted up right there next to the window at his normal spot. Like, that's his home base. Some days he be outside, nigga. Some days I'm walking to, to work from the bus stop. I see this nigga at fucking Shake Shack getting a burger talking to some bitches. I'm like, yo. I'm like, my fault, Glenn. I be waving at him sometimes. I see him on the street sometimes with the sign trying to get money from cars driving by and shit. I'm like, yo, what's poppin', my boy? You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen him this whole time. but like three days. I ain't seen this nigga. So shit sounds kind of sus. So as soon as he said, yo, you know that dude, Glenn, that, that, that be sleeping right there? I'm like, oh, no, nah, don't tell me. Say it ain't so. Don't tell me he did some crazy shit. So come to find out, the day that this nigga was smoking the meth pipe next to me, bruh, this nigga gonna go, I don't know what girl, he must have found a homeless shorty, because I cannot tell you what girl in this fucking earth would ever let this man lay a finger on them, let alone put their penis in her. So, apparently... According to the police, this gentleman found a nice, lovely, homeless woman. They went to a, a the back alley where the dumpster's at, a different dumpster, not that one over there. It's like the one across from the from the fucking uh, shopping center. So it's on the whole other side of the shit. So he found a new drop, new area, new location to get crazy. And they was getting nutty. And apparently they were shooting up heroin and shit too. Because they found syringes and shit all over, all over the place. So... That nigga end up doing all that shit. They end up sending that dude to a... Uh, they end up sending Glenn to a damn... One of those houses, bro. Where they send, like, homeless niggas to them shelters. Which, they were supposed to... They were... People, the customers that would come by, they always complain about him being there. So they would always ask the cops to, like, send him away to the shelter. But they said they couldn't. Because they didn't, like... He had the choice not to go. And every time they would try and, like, forcefully take him there, he would, like, flee to scene on some shit. Like, type... You know, niggas ducking the ops. You don't want to go to the shelter. Like, they're trying to help you out. You don't want to go get the support. Okay. So, at this point, they said they had kind of had to because this nigga was doing shooting up meth and shit. Shooting up heroin and all that. So, they had to call an ambulance, bring him and Shorty to a, the whole the whole nine yards. They had to do a whole little examination on them. Then they sent them both to a little house. Now, they, they chilling with the fucking with the psychiatrist. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That nigga ended up coming back to the drop like two months later. Nigga came back a fresh man, clean shape. He looked like he came from the army. Uh, well, knowing his background, that's maybe I shouldn't have said that. Boy got a PTSD flashback. But yeah, that's really the end of the story. I mean, I don't know if y'all was gonna think I was going to be smoking with this crackhead nigga, but I'm not that crazy. So <laughs> at least not anymore. Maybe if this was maybe if this was me from high school, I probably would have smoked some crack with this nigga, but not me now. Honestly, there are other little stories I can tell about this guy, like. The one time he came in to the fucking, to our Starbucks, and he was, like, strung out on something. I think he was on meth or some crap. And nigga went in our bathroom, literally peed in the sink. Like, there's a toilet right next to him. Dude decides to pee in the sink. And then dips. Doesn't wash his hand. He pees in the sink, leaves all that piss in the sink, and bounces. Just He doesn't even sit in the normal spot outside. The th he just leaves. He, he disappears for, like, a week. And I'm like, yo, this dude just pissed in our sink and bounced. Like, that was kind of disrespectful. <laughs> I didn't care that much. I wasn't the one cleaning the motherfucker. You can't pay me enough to clean that man's piss. Fuck out of here. Oh, hell no. There's also other times, you know, him arguing about to fight a customer and shit. He was a, he was a good dude. Honestly, through and through, he a kind of a loyal guy. Like, if some uh, random Karen would start acting up at the store, bro, he would come inside ready to throw hands with Shorty. I'd be like, yo, Glenn, you got to chill out, my boy. He would come in yelling with his gums flapping and shit. You know, shit was nuts. <laughs> So, I mean, shout out Glenn, but yeah, hopefully he got, he getting his life together and shit. So that's really the end of the story. Hope y'all enjoyed this shit. If you did, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. If you didn't, you don't have to. I don't care that much. So yeah. Peace.